Today's episode, the, the concept of the episode is we are gonna give you guys a rundown of Forbes's top 10 traits of successful people. Like for me, bro, like even someone that just has a normal job that doesn't really care too much about that, but is into like running marathons or doing Ironmans, like for me, that's a high achiever. Yeah, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't agree. Okay. Obviously, I know you have to put yourself through like higher levels of adversity to be able to run X amount of marathons or to do a marathon or, but does that make you a high achiever? Or does that make you a hard worker? Of course it does, bro. For me to be a high achiever, it's like, you in all aspects of your life are great. And if you're doing a nine to five working as the stacking showers, but you run a fucking sub three hour marathon, I don't think you're a high achiever. I just think you run fast. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the number one podcast on the entire planet. If you are not already subscribed, go and subscribe. Do that. We're back again with episode number 73. This uh, is 74. No, 72. 72? That's oh. every week, bro. Come on, man. Sorry, man. Come on, family. 72 weeks. Episode number 72, and we're back here again, man. Yes, sir. For another banger. It's just me and Chris again, because you know what? You guys love these episodes, so we're back in with another one of them. We've got some exciting guests lined up as well for the next few weeks. But, um, yeah, man, how are you? How are you doing? Good, brother. Good. Can't complain. How about you? I'm good, man. No, no, there was something yeah. there. I'm waiting. No, no, no. I'm so- Nah, bro, I'm good. There's, there's there's nothing that I could complain about ever. Like, come on, man, running water, sun's out. Yeah, first time in I've got two people weeks, around me out. that I care about. I'm happy. Like, yeah, what could I complain about, bro? Big wood. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> yeah, guys, we um, today's episode. The the concept of the episode is we are going to give you guys a rundown of Forbes's top ten traits of successful people. So this is Forbes. This is coming from a very, very reliable source. We have fact checked this. We need, to be, on, we need to be honest with ourselves as well and actually say like, do we tick off the characteristics along the way? Well, I'm look, you haven't seen this list. I'm looking at this list and I'm like, shit. And you lot this at home me. as well. That's t- <laughs> this is me. <laughs> There's 10 things that are going to be listed down. You better be checking them off. And if you're not, let's get to work. Mm-hmm. I don't even, I have no idea what's in front of H right now. I've just got a rough idea. But actually, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't have a rough Just idea. give me like maybe, I don't know, 10 things that you think would be the traits of the well, top. 10's t- a bit tough, but I mean like... Just give me a few. Let me just see if they're on it. I'll be like discipline. Uh-huh. It's, got, it's somewhere in there. Um, but discipline and hard work, do they come under the same one? Do they not? Um, um, yeah. I'm going to put into their fitness and health, health and fitness um, and good diet. Well, no, that's not on here, but I think that that's because, like, it's just successful people, whatever their field. Like, their field could be, like, fitness or being, like, an ABC or, or it could be a business owner. It's just... Yeah, but I think a characteristic of a successful person, like, a lot of people that I know that are doing well for themselves start their morning off with some form of, like, mm-hmm. workout. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And in all the films and all the movies, and, I mean, unless you're priding yourself off of Wolf of Wall Street, like... Everybody that's doing something successful is going out for a run or going to the gym and moving some weight. And I feel like that is just the characteristic of somebody that is successful. Mm-hmm. Um, you put me on the spot a little bit here. I feel like you're going to list them and I'll be like, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. But it's not really coming to mind now. Yeah. And I'm going to be pissed off when I look back at this and think I'm not just mashing them out. Hardworking, disciplined, confidence, um, smart, um, well, like in level of intelligence. Um, I suppose you don't have to be the most intelligent person to be That's successful, not, yeah. but and I don't actually think that you need to be that smart to be successful. To be honest, you know, some absolute fucking donuts that are doing pretty well for themselves. Yeah, but they're still intelligent, better, better, better than us do. Yeah, but they're still intelligent in something, in some yeah, space, yeah. in some field. Like you don't just get rich off of doing something you have zero understanding of. Like mm-hmm. there has to be some kind of base level of, um, in well, intelligence. Maybe it's the wrong word. Maybe just knowledge. Mm-hmm. A willingness to learn. Um, oh, I'm actually eager now because you're not. You're giving me a bit of a poker face. I don't know whether any of them are on there or not. I'm good at a poker face, man. Good actor. <laughs> Been told it before. Right. By, we go? by who? Huh? By who? Who is it? Um, uh, it was when when we were younger. It was like we were taking. I think it was actually uh, Stills. To be fair, I don't know if he listens to the pod or not. But I, I think it was still like I was like acting to be pissed off at someone. So like the one biggest of our pals. in the world then. No, no, no. But I'm I'm quite good at it. 
reckon I we can put your acting skills to the test in an episode one time. I will have a cameo in a film one day. I think I'd like. I think I'd like to explore the route of acting. Genuinely, yours would be like a, a you know Joey when he's like, "I'm in the movie, I'm in the movie, I'm in the movie," and they all sit around <laughs> and watch. And he's like, his grandma the calls him, guy. "You were on TV. I know. Did you see me?" And everyone's, everyone's like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> so go on. Come on, then bring no, us man, in. I'd be like a Dwayne Johnson or Jason Statham. Yeah, there. like a, talk about a cameo. I'd be, bro. I'd be the same character in every single film that I've been. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, the what brick shit house? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but right, man. Yeah. So the first, the first trait. Go on. The first trait of a highly successful man. Well, is they no, are these in the, order? The, the highly no, it's not in order. They're points. All right. But the the first trait of a highly successful person is resilience. The highest performers demonstrate extraordinary resilience. Navy SEALs undergo intense training and face extreme challenges. Olympians endure rigorous physical and mental preparation and entrepreneurs navigate the uncertainties and setbacks of building businesses. So resilience comes into... Not giving up. Not giving up. And consistency. Hard work, right? Mm -hmm. So tick. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Well, I'd say that... It is different, but it yeah, comes yeah, yeah. under the same umbrella, though. I'd say, I'd say resilience, more so than hard work, resilience is more so, like, it's not giving up on something. Is that why you That's said it to me about five minutes ago? You're showing resilience? When? Or did you not even... Oh, yeah, 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 it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. <laughs> resilience is, like, not giving up, like, being persistent and constantly trying to do something regardless whether you're failing or you're doing bad at it or you're doing good. Resilience is basically, like, the showing up every day. I wouldn't call it, like, the actual hard work. The resilience is yeah. constantly getting no's and just keep striving for the yes. Yeah, so it crosses over with consistency. Mm-hmm. I th- all, but they all, all, all going to cross them are going to cross other. over to hard work and consistency, though. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because it's pretty broad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is pretty broad. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I agree. I mean, I can put ourselves into a situation where we've had to be resilient and it's go to a client, oh, my God, this client's going to change our life back in our face. And again, and again, and again. And there's been like three or four different versions of that with different types of yeah, but clients. Then there's also been times where we've shown resilience, where we've shown back up somewhere and landed the job where we shouldn't have. Yeah. Well, even just recently, what happened? We went to a dinner with our client now and they basically said no and rejected us when we thought we were going to a dinner to close our deal. <laughs> and then I was like, H, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm not going out without a fight. <coughs> picked up that phone call and said, look, listen, I'm not willing to just roll over. I need a shot. And if it means we take a cut or whatever, blah, 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 got us in the door. Exactly. That shows resilience, bro. Fuck with that. Well, I say I'm fuck with that. (laughs) It was us. But yeah, I agree. Resilience, 100%. Mm -hmm. And if you're not resilient, you're a bellend. (laughs) What's next, Sean? To be fair, quickly, touching back on that, I think that you can show resilience in different, like areas of life like I'd say that I show resilience more so in an area of life where let's say I had to learn I don't know a new software or something I'd show resilience in me like being able to learn a software where like regardless of me not being able to understand it like I'd keep trying to understand it like I'd find a way I'd watch endless amount of YouTube videos like I'd just do research and somehow figure it out yeah of course that's resilience Mm -hmm. my motherfucker Um, right the next one like they are all pretty obvious, to be fair. Because some of them, maybe, you wouldn't have thought of putting in there, to be fair, the more that I scroll down. Yeah. But I'm they, they all do kind of tie back into each other as well. I'm waiting for one to throw me off my game. So the next one is mental toughness. Is that not resilience, though? Hi- no. So they possess mental toughness, and la- enabling them to push past limits, handle pressure, and stay focused on their goals, even in difficult situations. So mental toughness would be more so like, for, well, for me anyways, like mental toughness would be being able to say no. Like that's that mm. for me is a version of mental toughness. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. <sighs> Going through some shit in your personal life, but staying like true yeah. to your business. Yeah, yeah, not not even going through some personal personal like stuff in your life, but more so distractions, I think. Like regardless whether it's through your personal life or distractions with... I don't know, um, well, going out, partying, anything, or that's your personal life. The shit stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I'm saying is like a, the mental toughness too. Obviously, like you said, say no, but also as well, you've had an argument with the missus. Some shit's gone on at home. All your friends have gone to Ibiza and you're in the office. That takes mental toughness. It's like not letting your personal life 
come over and cross over what you're actually working towards yeah. and building. And that is genuinely what allows you to push past limits. I mean, for me, that's something that really like, ha for me to actually like enable the mental toughness of seeing people doing fun shit and like me not doing it, it actually doesn't phase me. I don't really get FOMO from it. When I was younger, I used to. Like if I'd miss out on like a motive or something, I used to be pissed. But I now it's more so about Marbella. Pardon? Last year I was gutted about Marbella, but this year For I wasn't. What? Degeneracy. Nah, it doesn't well, have that's to be. What, that's what happens there though, man. Yeah, In my opinion some anyways. People, yeah, but some, some people, bro. Like yeah. one of the girls here in our office was in Marbella and it was heaving and she probably, she didn't go to now and Mowgli, but she went to an amazing restaurant. She probably went and... Yeah, there's two sides of it, but the way that you're talking about Marbella, everybody goes there. Ooh, Every on, fucking son. time. We've been in here for how long? Turn on mine. Mine? Yeah. There's everybody, um, the, well, for me, the version of my bear that you're talking about is everybody goes their bank holiday weekend to go to these places. Yeah, but that's like two days mm -hmm. of it. What about all the lovely restaurants and all the lovely bra bars and all the great, like, the, the, the great, like, views and, like, activities that you can do there and the gym like it's got the biggest outdoor gym in the world in my bit, I think actually Europe like the paddle courses the network of people that are also there for a good time and also for some time no, bro, it interests me in going to my, like these places like Marbella, like Marbella and Ibiza but I don't want to go like yeah I'll probably go to a beach party but like oh no um, like the beach clubs or whatever once but like what interests me more is like actually going and doing like the fun shit like that well what's fun to me that's my opinion that's what I just said yeah no, 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 that stuff, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, well, you said what? Jealous of what? Degeneracy, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, but that's what everybody there this time of year, that's the only thing that you're seeing there, really. Yeah, the only thing you're seeing, not everybody that's there. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I saw someone today in the barber shop, and they went to Marbella, and them and all of their friends never got laid. Maybe they went there with that intention, but, like, it doesn't have to be, like, drugs and alcohol and girls and... Because even if sometimes you go looking for that, you don't find it. So it's like, yeah, we look at like, oh, degeneracy because like the biggest drug dealers and the biggest fucking footballers that are out or whatever, they're there and they're popping this, that, whatever, spending shitloads of money and banging all these girls. Like you can look at that a certain type of way, but that's not the reality of everybody that touches down. Yeah, of course, bro. Yeah. But the majority of people that are flying to Marbella, like around the time of year that you're talking about, that's what they go there for, no? I hear you, 100%. But I also think that every week we sit down and talk like we're not the majority of people. So, yeah, I want to go have a drink, get some sun. Do you know what I mean? Like, be a part of those environments, network with some people and have fun. But that's not the only reason. Last year, I was like, oh, I'm here. I'm fucking in my, in my home office like this. And I just wish I was there. But this year, it was like, one of our boys was even there. Me and you were just getting after it. Like it was Bank Holiday Sunday, I was here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Not phase, mate. Growth. Don't even, don't even know when the Bank Holidays are, man. It was last Sunday, wasn't it? Yeah. But anyway, come on. Let's go into the, the, the next one. So the next one is goal setting. They set specific, challenging and achievable goals. They create a roadmap to, they create a roadmap to success, breaking down larger objectives into smaller, actionable steps. That's something that I don't actually think we do enough of, you know. I was literally just about the same thing. Yeah. Maybe to an extent, say, we I, do. I say, I say that we goal set. Well, actually, yeah. do you know what? We say that we goal set, but we don't really, though. It's there's, quite there's, there's like a, Yeah, it's like a broad end goal. More so. I do hear I think we do. And I feel like I, like, on a day-to-day -day basis, goal set. Like, my goals for the day. Mm -hmm. And, like, allows me to conquer the day in a, in a much better way. And if you conquer the days, the weeks, the months, etc., eventually you're going to have good years and even decades if you keep going that way but like a specific of we need to do x by this or we need to upgrade and bring in amount this amount of people by this time and like we're not that specific with them but i also yeah. think like or maybe it's me just well, making the, an well, excuse well, well, the other thing that i'd say as well is they set achievable goals which is, falls into what i said last week about aiming low i yeah. think that's something important like obviously you, you you set unrealistic goals of where you want a business to go, but like mm. actually being able to set a goal that's achievable so that when you hit it, yeah. you're like shit, like we did that, like the next one could be that smaller increment, increment which would have been the larger one that you wouldn't 
would have wanted to get to over time. Yeah, I was just about to say, I feel like we probably don't because the line of work that we're in is slightly unpredictable. But I think that might actually just be an excuse. You, I was just about to say, I don't actually think it is. I think it's obviously there's other factors that fall into it, which we've like kind of grown to understand mm. as much as like you can put the work in constantly. Like you don't always get that reflected from clients. Like the amount of work that you might have on at a given time because it takes more than that. But it is at the end of the day, like in our hands, the yeah. same way that any other business or any other grind would mm-hmm. be. Like it's in your own hands. Yeah. For instance, if you wanted to grow on socials, like it, it's in your own hands just as much as it is to wanting to grow an agency. I feel like these are brand like, or anything. We haven't maybe put like numbers to them and stuff, but like we set ourselves goals and we do smash through them. Like set up an email marketing campaign, create our meta ads, get them set up the way we need to get them set up. I don't look at those create goals a new though. offer, but they are really to you. I, I don't know. To me, it's just like it's just the the necessary things that need to be completed until you. But there's still a goal though, because it's like we need to do this to do that. I was going to say the, I, I was going to say the necessary things that need to get completed completed for the end goal of actually closing clients. Because if yeah, because for me that's the goal. It's not. But it's not. An, yeah. We're not talking about the end goal though, because you can have like mini goals within something yeah. on the way. No, no, no. Of course. But the way I'm trying to th- think about like the goal is. We set ourselves something that needs to get done and do it. Is that not a goal? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think it's subjective. Well, it turns out to be subjective. Mm. Because I I don't know. I I, I disagree, like, respectfully. It's just the way that I look at it. It's just just jobs that just need to get completed. I just do them. Do you know what I mean? No, I hear you. Not to say that, obviously, like, if you've got a list of things that you refer to as goals aren't jobs. Of course, they're still jobs. Oh, bro, if you told me, like, five years ago, like, what's your goal? Like, just set up a marketing campaign. Like, that's not that's not what (laughs) I'm trying to say. Obviously, like, to pay off your mortgage, do you know what I mean? To earn, uh, do a six-figure month, to travel the world. Like, these are goals. I get that. But are they, uh, well, maybe goals or dreams or whatever, however you want to word it, but... If it's something that you want to do and want to achieve, regardless of whether you need to do them to achieve something else, can't they still be looked at as a goal? Probably call them both, bro. Yeah. Probably call them both. It's probably just what people refer to them yeah. as. Yeah, yeah. Come on then. They're, they're more so, well, I think the best way to put it would probably be tasks. Yeah, probably. I don't know. But yeah, the... Uh, Guys, if you uh, have learned something, don't forget to comment what you've learned on this episode. But yeah, the next... Fucking subscribe, man. The next uh, trait of high performer, a successful person, is discipline and dedication. These individuals are highly disciplined and dedicated to their craft. They adhere to strict training regimes, practice consistently, and maintain a strong work ethic. Is this around people in business or just like athletes in general, and bro? Stuff? Like, like it's just high, like high achievers, right? It's just high achievers. Yeah, because like, would you? Well, I mean, I don't really know what it consists of, but obviously, you, you've referred to Navy SEALs twice. No, there was no Does Navy SEALs in that one. Well, this one, yeah, but like above, like, would you class them as like a high thing. achiever? Well, yeah, it it was just once I said Navy SEAL. It was, that was the resilience one. But to be fair, of course you would, bro. Regardless whether you've, uh, in my opinion, yeah, regardless whether you have a nine to five, you're a business owner, you're an athlete, you're a fucking, you're a presenter of some sort of show or something, like, if that's your craft and you are willing to dedicate your hours to becoming better at that craft, whether that is public speaking and you just constantly sit, film yourself speaking and like recite mm. it and like you say it or you're a Navy SEAL and you have to put in like a tremendous amount of training, bro, to do these like, hard tasks like a disgustingly hard tasks like hell week and stuff like that where they literally go through horrible like vigorous fitness activities just to be a navy seal like these are all high achievers bro that are setting a higher standard for themselves yeah i hear that like for me bro like even someone that just has a normal job that doesn't really care too much about that but is into like running marathons or doing ironmans like for me that's a high achiever yeah no, no i don't i don't i don't agree okay Obviously, I know you have to put yourself through, like, higher levels of adversity to be able to run X amount of marathons or to do a marathon. Or, But does that make you a high achiever or does that make you a hard worker? Of course it does, bro. You have to, like... I asked two questions and you said, of course. Does it make you a hard worker or does it make you a high achiever? Because, like... 
I don't, I don't know. I feel like everybody, if they put their mind to it, can run a marathon. But not yeah. everybody could create an eight, a, 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 not, an eight figure business. Because people. Or be a pro no, athlete. Every, every, I, or, think, I think, okay, the pro athlete, yeah, because genetics and stuff like that could fall into it. But I believe that the majority of people could probably set up uh, an eight figure business. It just depends how resilient they are and how disciplined and dedicated they are to achieving that goal. Which yeah. is the exact same with a marathon. Like a marathon is not just turn up and run. Like you have to be dedicated and disciplined to getting out every single day to actually run a decent marathon. Obviously, there's bro, there's people like you can turn up and not train. Like that's the same way to run in a business. Like you can put in no preparation into running a business. But then and you just won't achieve. It. Exactly. Yeah. So though you won't be a high achiever. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't. I don't think it makes you a high achiever if you complete a fitness task. Like I, if I, listen, if I, think that, I think that unless that makes you're me a high performing at a top level. I personally I like I generally think that that adds up to me being a high achiever. Personally. I'm not saying you're not a high achiever. Um, no, but I like, think no, 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 I I'm, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is is like me doing these like side quests along the way of like maybe a marathon or something like that that maybe the majority of people in the world can do them, but like me dedicating like a big chunk of like a year or like a big chunk or, or period of time to like towards one of these goals and like being dedicated and disciplined to me makes me like a high achiever in that field. That's just my personal opinion. And that's mm. part of the reason why I do it, like to build up that stack of proof as to why I am like a, such a I think high achiever, like a, stack, a dedicated person. I think it builds a stack of proof of consistency, discipline and hard work. Which falls under discipline okay, well, let's and dedication. Just say, let, yeah, but let's just say... In five years, you've run another fifty marathons, but our business is still at where it at, is. It's at. Do you think? Oh well, it's all right though, because I've done X amount of marathons. I'm high. No, achiever. of course not. But they're separate goals. They're separate things which I have to stay disciplined to. Yeah, but so you would be a high achiever in one thing and not in the other. Not not like overall, I am a high achiever. Yeah, and that was my point though, because like my my point was the the average person that could run that just has a nine to five, but they're not like a high achiever in that sector. Like they could still be someone who, you know, took care of their health perhaps. And they ran marathons. Like I said, that was my example. Did an Ironman. Like in that sector of life, they'd still be a high achiever, which was my point. Do you get what I'm saying? I hear your point. I just don't know if I agree with it. I think there's a, a difference between being a successful person, a high achieving person and being somebody that's like dedicated to something. And like for you, as an example, like it's a bit of a passion you enjoy it. You enjoy the feeling going through it, the prep. Like, does that make you a high achiever? Or does this does that just show the personality traits of consistency, discipline, and hard work? Because I I think they're linked, but I don't think they're the same thing. Yeah, but that's what this is, though. Like, this is it's the character traits of someone that's like a high achiever, and discipline and dedication is like one of the subcategories. Yeah, for sure. But there are ten characteristics, not three. I feel like I, I, Look I've said my point I know my point I understand your point I think yeah. we just Agree to disagree on this one Alright Desham But yeah I'm not you. taking anything away From anybody that achieves Like great things In in a marathon Or mm -hmm. an Ironman or, Like I understand that They're I, probably the, very hard yeah. to do It's just uh, it, it doesn't have to be Maybe a marathon Was the wrong example for you Like I just think in, it, it doesn't have to be Like the business area of life To be a high like, I'm not talking about Just business though Yeah But like for me To be a high achiever It's like you in all aspects of your life are great. And if you're doing a nine to five working as the stack and showers, but you run a fucking sub three hour marathon, I don't think you're a high achiever. I just think you run fast. That's fair enough. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But yeah, go on, next one, let's go. Um, routines and rituals. The highest performing people in their fields all have very specific daily routines that begin with mindset preparation and fuel discipline and fuel the discipline necessary for extreme focus, time management and relentless prioritization. I kind of disagree. I was just about to say I something. Yeah, I don't really have like a routine. I just like wake up, train, eat, and then it's like to work. That is a routine though. Okay, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. But I don't fucking, yeah, yeah okay, that's, yeah, yeah, no, that's fair enough. But like I, I wouldn't say, okay, maybe I said it wrong. I wouldn't have a routine that's preparation to fuel uh, discipline for the necessary extreme focus, time management, and relentless prioritization. I think you're not really deep in what you just said because all of those things is what you do. You wake up, you train, you put your body through some shit and you're mentally, like, preparing yourself mentally for the day. 
you go home and you have a healthy breakfast, which you prepare yourself, you sit down and it's like, you're not having pancakes and waffles, you're having stuff that's hitting towards your macros and whatever, and you're sat, and even when you're sat, you might put a Joe Rogan podcast on or whatever, Mm -hmm. then you go and you clean yourself, it might be a cold shower, then you come and you're ready to work. Yeah. And then it's time management of, okay, between these hours I'm working, then I'm going to go and I'm going to have another healthy meal, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do X. And So I think without you realising it, like, you actually do fall into all of those things. I think we both okay. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I Probably. still disagree that it, like, it might be a characteristic of some, but not all. And my uh-huh. example would be Liam and Cam. We don't wake up and go to the gym and then do a uh-huh. yoga session and manifest and fuck all of that shit. We do 19-hour days. Gets like that. Yeah. If you want to achieve what we are going to achieve, like... We don't have a routine. We don't have a set hours. We just do what needs to get done. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think working in a routine is nice, but I also think having flexibility within that, like for me, anyway, on a personal level, I prefer. But I feel like we are, at this stage anyway, pretty regimented, to be honest. Like it is pretty much set time. So by flexibility, what do you mean? Just by like... The flexibility of like my routine is... I'm going to get here at 9 a.m. every day, and if I'm not, I'm getting a fine. The flexibility of, okay, my session ran over or I bumped into somebody at the gym or I had an important phone call that ran over, I've got the flexibility to push everything back half an hour. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? As opposed to, dum, 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 dum. Because I feel like that makes you feel a little bit robotic. And that, I also think it depends on what type of person you are and how you work. Mm-hmm. Some people like can only stick to a this half an hour slot, this half an hour slot. And some I, people I, I think mean, I've never like them. I've never liked time. Was it what, what? What do they call it? Um, time management. No, there's a name for it. Time blocking. Yeah. I'm, like I've never like that's never really appealed to me or something that helped. But like, but uh, for sure so there's must, some people that yeah, yeah. if they don't time block, like get carried away and don't get shit done. But I feel, I do feel like the, the me like I work quite well off. Although like I don't have like the, the way that I looked at it when I said mm. that I don't have. Well, um, Routine was like, I don't look at it and I don't have a routine that prioritizes, you know, like biohacking or like anything specific to make me like a more spiritual, better person to really set me up for the day. Like, I don't, I don't do that shit. But me actually like having a routine of, okay, it's wake up, train, home, eat, shower, and then like straight to work, like that just works. And when I, d- when I don't have that, it's like it proper throws me off. So, yeah, but so it's still a routine. It's just different you. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, someone might wake up, get in the cold plunge, and then go to work, and then come home and train in the That evening. is one thing that I wish that I did do. I wish I had a cold plunge. But it's, like, it's still a routine, yeah, 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 but yeah. it's just slightly different, and it's tailored towards you as an individual. Uh, yeah, I hear you. Okay. So I think, overall, as much as you can not have those traits and still be, like, a successful person or a high achiever, uh-huh. I think, overall, pretty much, well, from our experiences... Everybody has some sort of routine. Yeah. The next one, I think that we're both pretty good at. Um, adaptability. They, mm. excel into, they excel in adapting to changing circumstances. Navy SEALs must adapt to various environments. Olympians adjust to different competition conditions. And entrepreneurs pivot their strategies to, in response to market changes. Can I come back to our point from before? What, the Navy SEALs? Yeah. Because you've just said Navy SEALs, Olympians, and entrepreneurs... I can't, like, for me, like, I, maybe I don't know enough of what goes into being a Navy SEAL, but they just don't, like, sit on the same pedestal for me. It's, like, quite a renowned achievement to be a Navy SEAL, to be fair. Like, not many people, like, get to do it. Like, if you go to the Army, mm. right in America, anyways, it's, like, the pinnacle. But do, do you know that the, uh, there's a, a, some crazy stat. I can't remember it. You know, but I'm like, probably, like, the, the really... English, like, the, the English version of the Navy SEALs, what is it, the SAS? They, like, literally, like, shit all over the Navy SEALs in terms of how good they are and stuff like that. I'm probably throwing a lot of shade on something that I don't understand. But no, bro, just, like, it's hard, bro. Like, they'll, yeah, they'll okay. do, like, hikes. With, obviously, their, their kit's probably, like, 20, 30 kilos, and they'll have to do, like, 10, 20-mile hikes with that stuff on. But my thought process of, of like, comparing a Navy SEALs, like, you, you have to work really hard do? to, like, achieve something, like, to be a Navy SEAL, like, you get a badge or a certificate or you're a part of this clan. But, like, as an Olympian... You are the best in your country, and you like perform on a on a worldwide stage, like for representing yourself and your country. Like for me, that's a high achiever. Wait, but I'm, I'm curious. To now. be a Navy SEAL is like, isn't there like hundreds of thousands of them? 
Oh shit, I ain't got Wi Fi in here. Or maybe that doesn't. Nah, happen. there's not. There's probably a couple hundred, bro. What a couple hundred Navy SEALs in the whole of America. That's cat. Yeah, there's like a very specific team, bro, that are sent to do very specific jobs. Okay, maybe there's so that in itself, if that is fact, like it is more um, for me. That's like the, that's more the, of a big deal than than I thought. Like I just oh, thought it was maybe. like join the Royal Navy, like adverts on BBC, like not that. Oh, okay, two thousand active duty Navy SEALs. Wasn't Goggins a Navy SEAL? Yeah, he was. The elite force. I, I want to know what they go through. Oh, you. Yeah, you. I know you're looking at yourself right now and you're thinking, why am I not subscribed to the Gooms podcast? Just f***ing do it then. Because it helps the boys out more than you actually know. Peace. Through. See, like, you know, for me, if Goggins never had the stuff outside of what he does, I, don't, I wouldn't class him as a high achiever. If he just ran loads and loads and, like, that would just be, like, for me, that somebody that's, like, semi-deluded and really hard working. Yeah, but that is what he does, though. That's all he does. Is yeah, but outside of that stuff now, the presence, the inspiration, the motivation, the impact he, he has was on other people. still doing that before, though, wasn't he? Like, he, he basically just became famous from doing these things that made him a high achiever. Yeah, so, but when he got the fame, got the recognition, started inspiring and motivating people like me and you, bro, out on runs, picking up logs. We're never going to meet David Goggins in our life. No, he probably I'm going to meet him, bro. He doesn't even know who the fuck we are. Like, but that guy made an imprint on our lives from so far across the world. That makes him a high achiever in my mind. But if we never knew nothing about him and he was out there doing 60 miles, like, I'd, it's just a runner. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's just somebody that likes pain. <laughs> like, no, I, to me, that's a high achiever, bro. Really? Yeah. What is Hell Week? What happens during Hell Week? Here we go. Got it. I want to know. Well, what about the opposite? Five then? and a half days of cold, wet, brutally difficult operational training on fewer than four hours of sleep. How weak test physical endurance, mental toughness, pain, and cold tolerance, teamwork, attitude, and your ability to, fo- to perform work under high physical and mental stress and sleep deprivation. Trainees run as many as 125 miles or more over the course of Hell Week. Yeah, I'm good still. If they aren't running, hoisting heavy logs, or dragging themselves and then teammates through sand, and they are shivering on the edge of hypothermia in the Pacific winter waters. Surf torture, the trainees call it. Damn. Maybe we should put ourselves through it, bro. No, I'm good. Let me right, flip no, it. I'll Let see. me flip it on you quickly then. So you say someone that like does a nine to five, yeah, and like let's just works in Asda and does loads of Ironmans is a high achiever, yeah? Let's flip it. What about the corporate CEO, founder and owner of like an amazing law firm that doesn't work out that loves to eat shit food that outside of work is like just wants to chill out and do fuck all would you not class that person as a high achiever then of course i would and that's not con- contradicting my point like no the, I'm, the, I'm just asking you like no, does the, it no, still count is, like if, if they're a high achiever in that one sector of life then yeah I would probably, personally, I probably wouldn't have as much respect for them because that's just me. I think that health and fitness is something yeah, that's yeah. in everybody's control. But I'd still class them as a high achiever because in what they do in their field of business, whatever business they're in, like, they're fucking getting up and they're getting after it. But they've got, like, 500 employees, maybe more. They pay however many more yeah. wages through their high business. Achiever? They help however many clients. But then does that guy, that puts himself through that much adversity but doesn't do any of that stuff in his work life like how does it weigh up and come do you know do you no, get no, my no. point Listen, bro, i don't I, I hear you bro i thought we were going to agree to disagree no no yeah i know but, just no, bro, but to, to me though that doesn't make a difference yeah to Reg- fair, I'm, ramming, I'm ramming the point down your throat a bit sorry yeah, bro no, we agreed to disagree uh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah the way yeah. that i said it is like that's no different like that person to me is a high achiever the person with the business yeah. And the person let that's us got know. a normal you, you job. Let us know what you man think as well. Yeah. And the person that's got a normal job that just does some hard shit outside that they set a goal and they smash it. Like that to me is also a high achiever. Yeah. Both I, of them are. I hear you. I hear you. Um, but yeah, no, back back to adaptability, brother. Yeah, I think we're both good at that. Mm-hmm. Different different clients, different rooms, different environments. I also think different scenarios and situations. The, the way that I'm, yeah, I was going to say the way that I'm looking at adaptability, for instance, was like... We launched our ad for three days and we adapted quickly. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, things like that. Some yeah. shit hits the fan, you have to quickly change your approach mm-hmm. to something. That's the way that I'm looking at adaptability. Not so much like the way that you can put, portray yourself to a specific yeah. client or person. One thing stuck to me, uh, you know, the Our Planet series that... Um, 
thousands of years ago. Attenborough, mm. yeah. yeah, on Netflix. In episode one, he spoke about, obviously, the start of Earth. Yeah. And how so many creatures went extinct, and the ones that didn't were the ones that adapted. Mm-hmm. And that's the only reason why they're still with us today. It's so important that to adapt, like even like little things, like now we're coming into the world of AI. How are you integrating AI in your business? Are you offering some kind of service or freeing up some time with it? Because if you don't adapt to this new technology, it's going to swallow you up mm-hmm. in the next like literally five years. It's like really important to be able to adapt. That, yeah, that's that's just an example. Obviously, there's a lot more. But I feel like if you don't. Mm-hmm. You ain't gonna. Like, I, you, I, I saw something interesting the other day, and you know how people are quite scared about AI replacing them and stuff like that. Mm. And I agree with what this guy said because I was never someone that thought AI is gonna come in. It's gonna be robots doing absolutely everything. Like there probably will be some robots that are doing some type of shit, like the basic stuff which anybody could do. But I genuinely believe what this guy said. So what he said was that AI won't replace you as a person. But the people that understand how to use AI and they can use AI in the workforce, like in a work environment, are going to be the ones that replace you. Yeah. Which I think is a way stronger argument than just you're going to be replaced by some type of robot. I think you can say that when you think about certain types of businesses. But what about like manufacturing businesses and jobs like that? Like they will be easily replaced. Just by a machine that you plug the, in yeah, some but, code. Yeah, but they're already... The people, like, are already replaced, but that just created other like, job opportunities. Exactly. Because before, for instance, like, on a car manufacturing line, it was, like, each person was doing something. It was just, like, yeah. like a little thing that would go across. And now it's the machines, but that's opened up opportunities for people to run the machines, create code, like, and, and do this type of shit. I hear you. Yeah, maybe. But I think it's still... I don't think it, like... I don't think it's an even spread. Oh, fuck. Damn. I don't think it's an even spread. Yeah. Like, I do genuinely think that... It can take, it might take a hundred people to build a car, but now it might take three machines and it might take three person per machine. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think it like, I don't know, bro. It's, it's crazy, bro. The, the, the clever, like, just in the small period of time that it's been like available to quote unquote the public, what, two years now maybe? Mm-hmm. Like look how much it's used. Is it even two years? Is it? Maybe, yeah, that's, yeah, probably. probably yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking about when did ChatGBT become a thing? Mm-hmm. Well, OpenAI was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I don't That's know. That's what everyone's kind of based on. But it's been around longer than we. it's been accessible to us. In the new iOS update, it's going to be a Siri. It's going to be AI. Yeah, like that's, that's crazy for me. I don't know. That could have been like, maybe not as much, but someone's PA might have to do less hours now mm-hmm. because of something like ChatGBT. Do you know what I mean? Send these emails, send this app. But if it's coded properly and you've got a good version of AI and it's only going to progress, who's to say that you can't just tell it, these are the tasks for today, complete them. Mm-hmm. And it does it in like 30 minutes. Well, you, obviously, because I've been like messing around with like open AI and like doing some research into it recently, like you can kind of do that. You can like dedicate it to like one platform. That's what I'm saying. Like stuff. it's, it is replacing people. Mm-hmm. At a quicker rate than people are like. That makes it very valid though, what you said, like with it coming along, like how are people are going to adapt. Yeah, well, how how are, how are you going to adapt? Mm-hmm. Do you create the AI software? I mean, we're talking about a percentage now, a small percentage. But in it, on, in the grand scheme of things, if you don't adapt with the times, you'll get left behind. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. And I do think as well, adapting in certain situations and scenarios with certain people is also important. Yeah. Because the way that, it doesn't mean that it's a facade, but the way that I'll act with a female client who runs a clothing brand is very different to the way that I'm going to react to a man that owns a gym. Yeah, and be. Yeah, 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 do you know what I mean? It's it's that that in itself is still a form of adaptation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so no more. Nice man. Well, the next one. Where are we at, by the way? What number? They're actually not numbered, but we are on. There is four left. Come so on, then. We are, yeah. Uh, the next one is teamwork and collaboration. Yeah. Despite the often individual nat- nature of their pursuit, successful people understand the importance of teamwork. Navy SEALs clo- work closely as a unit. Olympians often train with coaches and teammates. And successful entrepreneurs and top physicians build strong teams and partnerships. Yep, 100%. I think that I'm very, uh, I'm a very good natural team leader. I agree. I think that I was like that at school. Mm. It's always good. I remember at primary school, like I'd take charge in team It's tests. important. It's important. You can't do everything. Mm-hmm. You can't. And like the further you... 
well, let's say, let's use us as an example. The further we progress, if we don't bring people in and manage mm-hmm. those people and create a team and a culture, we can't deal with the workload. Yeah. And if we can't deal with the workload, we don't get paid for the workload. And if we don't get paid for the workload, we're not progressing as a business. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it applies into everything, like you said, with the Navy SEALs and the Olympians. I, and I, I personally think that that's what business is about, though. Like, it's about collaboration more than anything. Mm. Well, yeah, really, because it's down to the basics of why you pay me. It's an exchange of services, so that's still yeah, some yeah, kind yeah. of teamwork, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is it? I don't know. You like you, you collaborate on a lot of things in business, whether that's inspiration from someone, having conversations, or like for instance, they brought in an agency like us, yeah, to help them achieve X, Y, or Z goal. Yeah, that they don't have the skill set or the knowledge to mm. do themselves. Yeah, collaboration falls under a bunch of different things, and I also think that. I mean, there's some business owners that I know that think that they know best, and I really do think that that's the wrong approach. Like being able to collaborate with other people and just understand what they're saying and that their points are probably right in certain situations and not being so closed off to them. I don't think there's one business model that you can scale to six figures a month where you just do stuff on your own anyway. Mm -hmm. Really. Unless you're talking about like an individual, like high level trader. But wow, do you know, I was actually going to say I was an FBA, but the. But that's not even true because, like, who's you're probably your your no, you, no, no, no. You, goods, I was going to say you're probably talking to like a no, because that stuff's like I wouldn't count that as the collaboration, though. Why not? Because you don't even talk to anybody. You just tick a box to say that everything's going to go to the Amazon warehouse, and like you don't do anything for the orders being packed. The way that I look at the collaboration for something like that would be, you'd find like you're a mentor collaborating with Amazon. You'd find like a mentor or other people in your space that are doing it. No, I disagree. Just because they're not on your payroll doesn't mean they're part of the team. Doesn't mean no, but without them you couldn't do but it's it. Not, it's not like you have a conversation with people at Amazon, obviously, unless something gets fucked up. Like, Amazon's just the platform that what your business your is on. Yeah, that's collaboration, your so, supplier. But the way that I'm thinking of Amazon is the way that Benny does it, who comes on a pod. He just goes into Tesco's and finds stuff. Yeah. Like, his, his collaboration would be a mentor. But it's not purely just him, though. As much as he's fulfilling part of the tasks the customer doesn't get their stuff without the other pieces no of course but that's just the platform though isn't it yes that there's people that are involved in amazon but like he doesn't directly collaborate with those people they're just like part of the platform that functions what he does but is that not still classed as like a team effort i kind of there's probably arguments of both just the way that i'm looking at the collaboration isn't like the platform that he's on it's the mentors the other people are in his space that are doing it and he can take advice from them or give advice to them. The same way for us, like, just in terms of us speaking to other agency owners, like, that's the way that I'm looking at it, whether they're doing better or on the same place as us. Okay, well, let's, let's forward us on, on our journey then and let's put ourselves into Benny's situation. There's a customer that wants your service or product mm-hmm. and there's somebody who's going to fulfill it. You're the cog in the middle. No, but I think that that's different though because we're actually in direct communication with that person. It's just, again, it's just my opinion. Regardless of whether you're in direct communication with the guy who drops off your parcel, from when you, when you send it off to the depot and then it, the depot then puts it into a certain part and the, that, that part then gets delivered to this branch and then that branch delivers it to the door, mm-hmm. without these other people in collaboration with you, regardless of whether you've spoken to them or not, your business or your service doesn't get fulfilled. Yeah, no, I hear that. So, like it's still a team effort. As much as you're the one running the, the thing and you're reaping most of the rewards of it, like you're still paying a cost to Amazon so then they can pay their team to fulfill the, the rest of the... Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, I feel like the only business model where there's not other people involved would be the like trading on the market. I said trading, yeah. But even that, like you evolve collaboration, bro. Because if other people buy, yours goes down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Nah, no, no, no. Not from... Uh, from right, that... For me, is the same as the Amazon thing. we like that as a platform. I don't look at that as the collaboration. The collaboration in trading would be with other traders, and like learning from other traders about mistakes and stuff like that. Yeah, the, the, it's I just, feel like it's that's just that's, the way that I'm looking at it. That's one way you can be like very like I do this, and the markets are the market. Mm-hmm. But I don't think the markets and Amazon are the same, because the markets will be here if everybody on planet Earth. But actually, I don't know. No, they, they wouldn't. Because yeah, because then no one. Yeah, yeah, no one would be. Trade in the market. There'd be no bread about. <laughs> yeah. It'll be right. still firm. Anyways, the next one. Mindset and visualization. They use mental 
They use mental rehearsal and visualization techniques to prepare for challenges every day. Visualizing success and maintaining a positive mindset contribute to their performance and resilience. So like manifestation vibe. Yeah. And also as well, we like... This, did, was it on the pod we spoke about? Was yeah, it, was last it on week the pod we James. spoke about? Yeah. Yeah, I think Again, it, I, yeah, my I think my thoughts on like this type of thing like kind of stay I I, I wouldn't really say that I visualize anything. Like well, actually, do you know what? I disagree. I say, no, I do. Yeah. yeah, of course you do. Of course you do. And as well, you come here with a positive mindset every day, regardless of how shit it is. I'm going to do this because I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I need to do this because I want to do that. If you had a negative mind frame, it's going to be like, "Oh, I have to do this." And it might well, not even... Even like down to like what I wrote on the whiteboard, bro. It's like what we can do. Yeah. Everybody that I know that's successful has a certain approach on work and on what it is they're trying to build and grow. Mm-hmm. And like... Everybody great, bro, thinks positively. Mm-hmm. Because if you always are going to pick out the negative stuff and the bad, like... That's more often than not where it's going to go, bro. Yeah. Like... um. Like the the law of attraction, like simple as that. Mm-hmm. Put out good, be good, and more often than not, good comes back to you. Mm-hmm. Next, right. the next one is continuous improvement. These individuals mm. are committed to constant growth and improvement. They seek feedback, learn from mistakes, and are always looking for ways to enhance their skills and performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that also comes back down to adaptability. Well, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, well, yeah. The thing with con- like continuous improvement, I, the way that I look at it is like, uh, I like to improve in all, all areas of life. Mm. I don't know, like, what's an example that I could give? Even something small. Um, I actually just wrote a script about it on a reel, um, about like course correcting. This kind of falls into it, but like even continuous improvement could be. Your breakfast, let's say it's pretty shitty every morning. Like the continuous improvement could be you improving that, I don't know, your nutrition or yeah. something as simple as that. Like that for me is still like continuous improvement in all areas of life. But I guess that that's probably because I'm an individual that thrives off like being good everywhere. Yeah, I think that's probably a bad example mm-hmm. purely because like if you're going to think about getting better, like it's just going to be down to the simple things like in the gym, it's progressive overload. Like at work, a new skill or a new. Do you know what I'm saying? Or I, I'm thinking now, Navy Seal. It's going to progressively. You're going to push yourself progressively harder to get one percent better every day. Mm-hmm. As an Olympian, you're looking to get that 0.1 second quicker or that 0.1 second higher or further in your jump or in your shot put or your javelin. Or mm-hmm. and as an entrepreneur, the continuous like. Evolvement of what it is that you do is I'm going to learn an, a new skill or how am I going to get better at this skill or down to how do I receive my calls on a podcast how do we articulate do we use less ums and ahs and likes and that's a progressive evolution like a continuous growth I feel like the, the breakfast is just like an adjustment it, no, no, it was probably yeah it's probably a bad example but I hear, the po- I hear your point yeah, 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 yeah. makes sense just it was it was probably just a shit example. But You're make, just thinking make, about oh, food, right. man. You hungry? Just like <laughs> make, 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 making your bed in the morning, for instance. Yeah. Like for me, I don't know. These little things like all add up. For but how do you? Everything. How does that get continuously better every day? No, but it's something that would amount to making like to a continuous improvement on your. I think that just falls more so into like routine, like having that that routine of I wake up, I brush my teeth, I do my bed, I make my healthy breakfast, I go to the gym, boom. But is it? I wake up a little bit earlier. I'm more efficient. I spend less time on my phone. I get to the gym earlier. I push harder in the gym so that I'm at, at work earlier. Like that's a progressive. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Hey. But I hear, I, I hear the point. I hear the point. Right. The last one is risk taking and innovation. Successful entrepreneurs, Navy SEALs mm. in certain missions, and Olympians often embrace calculated risk. These habits are critical for all entrepreneurs who disrupt. Um, who disrupt industries. They innovate, push boundaries, and explore uncharted territories in their respective fields. I'd say that I'm a risk taker for the bad and for the good, but I'm just, I'm so fucking impulsive when it comes to taking risks. Like, it's not even a, the way, when I see a risk, like, it's not really even a risk to me. It's just like, just, if, if I'm feeling it, I just do it. 
I saw something and it stuck with me and it was quite recently actually and it was risk nothing and risk everything I think if you're not willing to take a, a risk take a leap of faith jump into something new you're never going to know what the outcome of it is and mm-hmm. you're always going to stay stagnant so an example for us going into a new space and offering a new service to our clients that we might not 100% be confident in mm-hmm. it's a risk if we perform, we get paid, they're happy, build our relationship, and we further it. But if we don't, we break the trust which has already been created, yeah. and we lose the client for life. But do we progress without taking that risk? I don't think so. It stays stagnant. Mm-hmm. So, Or well, even things down to like running an ad campaign or like running an exactly email that. marketing campaign. Like yeah. It's all, yeah. We're it's risking risk. liquid for the... Well, for no guarantee of it being come back our way. Do we think we've done all the right things for it to do that? Yeah, but is there a guarantee that it will? No. Well, that's what falls into it. It's like calculated risk, isn't it? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, exactly that. And then you can even do it like, again, we we touched on the markets. Like, it's a calculated risk. But if you don't risk it, you're not going to, you won't do that. But there's also the possibility that the market goes the other way. Do you know what I mean? Every, everybody that invested in property you, 20 years ago. Here's an interesting thought, though. Can you, like, really push boundaries in, like, the Forex market, for instance? What do you mean? Because that's what it's falling, like, risk-taking and innovation. It's like they innovate, push boundaries, and explore uncharted territories in their respective fields. Can you push boundaries in the markets? I don't know if I've got a, a strong enough understanding to know what pushing a boundary would or whether you... I don't, I, don't, I don't know I don't know well, I can apply it to myself and say pushing boundaries would be like I said going into a new space or pushing boundaries would be onboarding a team that you maybe can't afford right now but w- will help you to progress to a level where you can afford it and some mm-hmm. like that would be pushing a boundary and, and, and taking a risk that if it doesn't go the way you want it to go, can really slap you in the face. Mm-hmm. But if it goes the way that you want it to go or that you hope it goes or expect it to go, then you're onto something. Then you, you're growing, you're evolving. Yeah. Um, but yeah, risk is important, bro. The people that are scared to take risks, the people that don't take any leaps, stay. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Come on, Sean. Whoa! Yeah. I don't know where I was. Talking about risks. Huh? Talking about risks. Yeah, well, look. Risk nothing and risk everything. Simple as that. Wow. That has left me thriving with inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out the wealth page on IG, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. That's, uh, that's all the points. Is there anything that you'd like to touch on on what makes somebody a high achiever? I think... Um, yeah, what's your own opinion on it, man? Give me some points. I think everything that is on that list is completely valid. Uh, and I think that we're doing everything in our power to, well, to have those characteristics. I think we already do have all of them, I think. What, do you think they missed anything out? Um, nothing really springs to mind, really. Other than, actually, I think a, a little bit of heart and desire... Like, but then you can also say it comes under the umbrella of like some of those like mm-hmm. resilience and mental toughness and stuff like that. But I feel like, yeah. I don't know. Some people have got all that of them fire. kind of intertwined. To be fair, like resilience, yeah. I'd say probably falls into adaptability. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But yeah, I feel like some people have just got that fire in them, um, and some people just don't. But then, do is that the same as risks or the same do you, as? What do you think it can be created? That fire in your belly, possibly, but what would create it like the thing that comes to mind is i would say like a circumstance yeah so like i don't know my my missus breaks up with me because she went and got with somebody that had an eight pack and i'm a fat fuck or she went and got with somebody that was financially free and i'm broke that might create the fire in my belly to get fit and to get money yeah but i don't know i feel like some people are okay with just being okay and that's fine but that's not us and that's why i feel like that fire in the belly you've either got it or you don't Maybe there's some things that made them not have it. Maybe that everyone's kind of born on a level playing field in your upbringing situations that you kind of experience 
determine what kind of individual you are into your adult life. But even from a young age, like from my footballing background, there were some kids that worked a lot harder than others, grafters. Some people had that fire. Some people wanted to go after it. Some people didn't. I don't know. Is it a pro- are you a product of your environment or are you born with that fire in your belly? I, I don't know. Yeah. On the same, in the same situation though, I was like one of the kids that didn't. Do you know what I mean? And now I'd like to think of myself as somebody that has that fire and is determined and pushed to, to, to do great things. So maybe you can create the fire in your belly and it comes from living within those characteristics. I guess we'll never know. I think you just create it yourself, to be fair. Yeah. Obviously, I don't, Leia, I don't think you're just born with it. I think you're a product of your environment and kind of what you're, you're around. So how do you have the same siblings... One of them does this and one of them doesn't. If it's in the same, uh, maybe, maybe I don't know. Different friends, fuckers. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of other stuff. Uh, okay then. But yeah. Oh yeah, let's round off, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn the bell notification on, so you get notified every time I release a podcast. <gasps> and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening, guys. Catch I feel like later. I need to make that part longer because it's like I don't really run out of breath. You want to run out of breath? Peace! (laughs) Catch us later.